That sounds scary. Let's do it. Oh, help me. Oh, help me. <gasps> no. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy Friday if you're watching this on Friday or if you're watching this on the weekend or I guess any other day of the week because you know, it's not a live stream. You could be watching this on any day but I hope you're having a good day. Today I'm gonna be testing some of your makeup hacks. I'm talking to you. So I actually asked you guys over on my Instagram. If you don't follow my Instagram, it's just at Sophie. But I do sometimes ask for your guys' help for videos and stuff. And I asked on a story if you guys had any makeup hacks that really work for you. And I should try pretty much. So I've screenshotted a few of these. I've got together some products and I'm going to be trying some makeup hacks that you guys love and use and see if they work for me. And I really hope they do. And I hope that some of these make life easier because I don't think I've actually tried any of these before. And I guess we will just get into it. Oh, as well um if you're not subscribed and you like my videos i would really appreciate if you subscribed press the little button down there turn on my notifications leave me a comment if you're new if you just found this video leave me a comment if you've been here for a while leave me a comment and we'll have a chat in the comments let's get to it oh and also please give this video a thumbs up thanks so the first hack that i've got which actually was probably the most requested hack that all of you sent in i definitely had the most amount of comments saying this one is to mix your foundation with moisturizer people have said that it makes your foundation go on nicer it makes your foundation smoother and just like generally more glowy so I guess I'm gonna try this and I don't actually think I don't think I've done this before and also a couple people said that they do this to make like a tinted moisturizer they'll just take a bit of moisturizer put a few dots on their face and then just a little bit of foundation blend it in and it's kind of like a nice glowy lighter coverage foundation I'm not sure why I haven't tried this before because I really like tinted moisturizers at the moment oh my t-shirt keeps popping up from underneath my jumper I've gone for a matte foundation because I thought if I use a glowy foundation it might just be a bit of a glow overload and I know that this one is normally kind of like a semi matte sort of finish so we'll see what finish it turns out. This is the collection Lasting Perfection matte foundation. I've got the shade 6 Cashew. I'm not really sure if this is actually even going to match me today because I don't really have any fake tan left. This is the Soap and Glory Speed Plump All Day Super Moisture Marvel Moisturizer. Who was here in the days where I used to use this and only this as my primer because it has glycerin in it and everybody like lost their shit over the Nivea men post shave balm because it had glycerin in it and it had that tacky finish. This had the same thing and I just use this and it's a really nice moisturizer and I still use it sometimes so it also smells kind of like citrusy. I'm just taking a little bit of this on my fingers and then I guess I'll just dot it onto my face. Is that enough? I don't know if that's enough. I reckon that's about enough. And then let's take my foundation. Oh why is there like a crusty bit on it? So I've just taken about a pump of this. Wait one second, I need to put this down because I'm gonna make a mess. I'm not too, quite sure what I'm doing here. So let's blend all of that together. Ooh, it's definitely shearing out. I can tell that it doesn't quite have as <laughs> maybe speak when you don't have the sponge in your mouth i can tell that it doesn't have as much coverage as when you just put it straight on there's definitely a bit more of a glow going on there okay let's do the other side i do think that if i was going to go for a tinted moisturizer kind of thing i'd probably put on either more moisturizer or less foundation you know what this actually is working really nicely and i see what they mean about it making your makeup go on smoother maybe you know what guys if you do have dry skin or if you do have a foundation where you're kind of like uh it makes your skin look a bit crusty and you don't really like it Maybe you're thinking of throwing that foundation away because it's too dry or whatever. Try mixing in a bit of your moisturizer. It's definitely added that bit more of a glow and it does look smoother. Let me just zoom you in a little bit more. Ugh. Hopefully you can kind of see what I mean. It's got a nice sort of glow to it, which it doesn't, it's not usually this glowy. It looks really nice. It looks a lot more natural, but I really like how that's turned out. Whoever suggested that, I like it. It worked well for me. Moving on. So this one is to carve out your eyebrows with concealer before you apply your brow product. And she's put specifically a before applying brow powder. So I don't normally carve out my eyebrows anyway. I just kind of do my thing and let them run wild. I guess it could be helpful in terms of like mapping out your brow shape before you fill them in. So I'm using the NYX Born to Glow Concealer. I've got the shade Fair. And I'm just gonna, ooh, <laughs> let's take some of this onto the back of my hand, like that. And then take some on a small brush. 
I guess this way you can kind of get a more natural eyebrow without having to fill them in as much because half of the point of, well, like me doing my eyebrows especially, I think is to try and make them look a more tidy shape, but sometimes you can definitely go a bit overboard. But I can actually see where this is going. And it also has shown me that I really need to pluck a couple of eyebrows over this side. It's so frustrating, right? This eyebrow is thicker than this one and this one never grows any taller. This is just like my skinny long eyebrow and this is my short fat eyebrow. It is quite frustrating. Okay, let's I guess do that and extend it to where I want the tail of my eyebrow to be. And then I'll add my brow product. See, I don't really wanna like cut off the front of it. I kind of like it. I think it definitely has mapped out the shape nicely. I probably will now use less brow product. I'm just gonna like blend the edges of the concealer with my sponge. I just get a bit scared of making my eyebrows look a bit too blocky when I carve them out. But I guess if you start out like this, they're less likely to look like crows on your face, you know? Well, I say that now. We'll see what happens after I fill them in. Because she did specifically say eyebrow powder. I'm gonna use a brow powder. This is the Benefit Foolproof Brow Powder. I've got the shade three. I cannot get that TikTok sound out of my head that's like waking up in the morning, thinking about so many things. It has been stuck and repeat in my head all day. So I'm just gonna take some brow powder and I guess just try and not go outside of that guideline that I've made for myself. It would help if my eyebrows were actually even and this left eyebrow didn't look like a freaking slug i was trying to create the illusion of brow hairs but that has just totally failed oh but i guess what i can do because i haven't set anything yet is go back in with my concealer on my brow brush and i guess just go back in at the front there okay that kind of worked cool yeah what do you guys think of the brows i think that was definitely more time consuming than it normally takes me to do them but they look all right. Not a bad hack, especially if you have quite bold eyebrows to start out with and they don't really need much filling in, more just like shaping. That's actually a pretty good one because it did the job. Next, the next one is to use hairspray as your eyebrow gel. And this person just said to put some hairspray on a spoolie and run it through your eyebrows. The smell of hairspray kind of makes me think that it might burn my skin. My skin is quite sensitive, so I probably shouldn't be putting hairspray on it, but I mean, my skin has had 12 year old Vaseline on it. I'm sure it can survive a little bit of hairspray. This is the VO5 Ultimate Hold Hairspray, and I'm just gonna spray it into a spoolie. And this has just showed me a patch where I missed with my brow powder. Well, it's definitely working to shape them. If it can hold your hair in place, your eyebrows are hairs, so I'm just gonna take a little bit more brow powder. Really actually does feel like I've put eyebrow gel in my brows. So I guess if you are in a pinch and you don't have any eyebrow gel, use some hairspray, does the job. My face isn't stinging. I didn't see a concealer hack on there that I haven't actually tried yet. Um, a lot of people were just saying to kind of like do this where you just put it in the corners. But I think I did that in my previous one of these videos. Oh, and I completely forgot to say at the start of this video, I have done one of these before. And originally I got that idea from Steph Toms who is one of my lovely friends. Then I'm just gonna put a bit of powder on my under eyes so that I don't end up creasing all over the place. I'm also just gonna do a little bit of cream bronzer just because I don't have any cream bronzer hacks from you guys. Well, not that I saw anyway. I'm just gonna add a bit of the NYX Born to Glow Concealer in Warm Caramel. Ooh, I hope this blends out. That's my hack for you. <laughs> using, using a concealer as your cream bronzer. Ah, oh, I think I might put a little bit too much on my forehead. Just a little bit, just a little bit too much. I got a feeling that I've used too much bronzer on my nose. About that feeling that I had about using too much bronzer on my nose. It's fine guys, <laughs> totally fine. Trust the process, you know. I know this still looks ridiculous right now. I will fix it. I will fix it with powder in a second, but I'm now just gonna test the hack that says to use a red liquid lipstick as your blusher. Red liquid lipstick as blush and put dots like a line over cheeks and nose, but not on the tip. Okay, so I guess they mean like all over here. That sounds scary. Let's do it. This is the L'Oreal liquid lipstick in the shade I don't. I mean, I could not have picked a brighter red liquid lipstick to do this with. Okay, so they said to put dots on your cheeks in a line over my nose, but not the tip. 
like this and then just blend it out oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god okay okay um this was definitely brighter than i thought it would be i really should have used a smaller amount than that oh help me oh help me <laughs> and i now look like i have a rash and also as well there's kind of like two spots like dots in the middle of it there where it kind of has dried i guess and sunk into my skin before i blended it out <laughs> before i what before i blended it out um i now just look like i've had a nasty sunburn i was thinking of like doja cat when she did her blush and she did it all over her nose and her cheeks and it looked really cute but now like doing that with the liquid uh yeah i mean i can see how this would work but i've completely messed it up and oh i already set my under eyes how am i gonna fix this well it doesn't matter now that my nose contour was completely off because i've now got like dots of red lipstick on my face <sighs> i didn't mean to bring it so close up towards my eyes it was an accident i think that looks a bit better but i've still got like little dots from the red lipstick on my face and where it kind of like sunk into my skin so i'm gonna try and cover it with a tiny tiny bit more okay no it's just done the same thing but worse uh maybe don't use this exact red liquid lipstick it's probably the type of liquid lipstick that i'm using i would have thought that one would definitely work i think just be careful don't put as much on as i did blend it out quickly maybe it would be better to kind of like put it on the back of your hand first and then use your brush and then kind of like go in with it that would probably work a lot better but i can see how this would work okay what's next <laughs> also i was kind of hoping that my powder would dull it down a bit but i think it's just made it look even more like i've actually got a rash so i'm just gonna add a little bit of bronzer this is the misguided one actually the instant vacay bronzer um i'm just gonna mix like the two shades together Let's also just ignore that I brought it way too far down my cheeks. Let's just ignore it. Don't, don't follow me. Don't do as I say. This is why I reiterate in my videos so much that I'm not a professional. Like, imagine if you found my channel thinking I'm a professional makeup artist and you're gonna learn some, like, great tips. And then you tune in and see this. Okay, so this person has said a little bit of bronzer on the inside of the lip slash nose dip thing. So I'm guessing they mean, like, this part. What even is this called? The bit in the middle of your moustache, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna take the lighter bronzer shade and... I guess just put a bit there but they didn't really say what it's supposed to do mm. see i don't i feel like it just looks a bit weird on me like pronouncing that area it gives me a bit of like cat vibes but if it works for you then it works for you i'm not the biggest fan also i should probably use a contour shade rather than like bronzer because that's just come across like a little bit orange you know what if it works for you that is perfect and keep doing whatever works for you because you know no one no one else can tell you how to do your makeup but for me that one is not my favorite so i'm just gonna do a little bit of a little bit of powder if i did that wrong please let me know because i could have done who knows so this next one says to use a setting spray before you do your highlighter and it makes it more intense this is the jake jamie tropical quench essence quench yes essence spray it's technically not a setting spray it's like a refreshing mist that went straight into my ear was definitely too much oh that stuff smells amazing wait i guess i don't want to dry it yet let's leave it nice and wet and i'm then just gonna go in with some highlighter while my face is still dripping wet maybe that's not the best idea oh my goodness well <laughs> It has given me that kind of wet look. I do actually feel like it sort of melted it in with my foundation. That is definitely very intense. Maybe I didn't quite, quite need as much on my brush. Oh my gosh, that is really cool. It kind of like melts it into your foundation almost. Oh my goodness me. My cheeks today, <laughs> like, oh, it's all just gone a bit wrong. But wow, that works. And that kind of makes it look even more seamless, blending it into your skin. That looks incredible. It's really giving me that like wet look. I think this would be a really good one if you want to make your highlighter look a little bit less powdery. Because yeah, like I said, it kind of mixes with the spray while it's still wet and really, really intensifies the glow that one works really well let's just add a bit down my nose amazing <laughs> one of the hacks on here that really made me laugh is to um warm your mascara up between your boobs before you put it on i mean between my boobs yeah should we give it a go i don't think you have the facilities for that big man <laughs> doesn't quite work for me between my boobs it's just my chest. But go ahead. If you have big boobs, 
maybe this works. A few other people said warm their mascara between their thighs. Some people warm it up under their armpit. I'm not quite sure why you need to warm your mascara up before you put it on. I guess if your mascara is drying up a little bit, that could potentially work. But uh, if I put this between my boobs, it will just fall straight into the ground. So um, I appreciate the input. So this next one, okay. I have a feeling this person might be trolling me because they used the little like side eye eyeball emojis next to it but they said to use vaseline as eye primer in the previous one of these people said to put vaseline on before your mascara and that just turned out to be a whole mess so i'm not expecting this one to work but i do want to give it a go just in case they are being legit i'll zoom in so you can get the full effect i'm taking some vaseline on my finger the one thing that i think that this could actually work well for is like glittery shimmery shades that need a bit more of a sticky base the only thing that i think with this is because i do have quite oily eyelids I've just got a feeling it's not gonna last. And I'm just gonna go straight in there. Let's use a bit of blue eyeshadow because why, why not? Definitely should have used a clean brush because this brush has still got a bit of purple on it, but you know what? It's actually kind of working really well. At the moment, I'm just kind of pressing it onto my eye to sort of like set the Vaseline, I guess. It looks a little bit interesting at the moment. We will continue. I can actually feel my brush sort of dragging in it. It feels sort of almost a bit too sticky because my brush is sort of getting stuck to it and the eyeshadow is kind of sticking to it in clumps. It just feels really strange, like it doesn't feel right, but it's kind of working though. It almost feels like putting your eyeshadow on top of oil. Okay, it is starting to go a little bit patchy. So I have just used one color, but it kind of has worked. It kind of worked. I'm just taking a different brush. I'm just gonna try and like blend out the edges a bit more, I guess. But I will say my eyelids do feel a little bit sticky and I've got a strong, and yeah, they have creased a little bit. I've got a strong feeling at some point that Vaseline is gonna start coming through the powder and my eyelids are gonna get super oily because they do kind of feel sticky already. What I am actually just gonna do is take a tiny bit of this on the center of my eyelid. I'm taking a shimmer on a brush brush and I'm gonna pack that in the middle. Oh wow, yeah, just as I suspected, it kind of like sticks to that shimmer. I guess overall, like it does work, but you would definitely be better off with an eye primer because I think that this would end up creasing quite badly after probably like an hour because it's already started to crease after about 10 minutes. Does it work? Yes. Would you be better with an eye primer? Yes. Okay, we're nearly at the end. I'm just putting on a bit of black eyeshadow sort of liner just so that my lashes can blend a little bit easier. So the next hack is to stick your lashes on before you do your mascara, which is something that I never do, but apparently if you do this, you can see what you're doing a lot easier. I never do this normally because I don't like getting the mascara on my fake eyelashes. We'll see if it makes my life any easier because I kind of suck at putting on fake lashes. Actually, one sec, I'm just gonna go trim them. I'm also gonna like angle my camera slightly upwards because I feel like it's cutting the top of my head off. Okay, I think that's a bit better. These are the Pretty Little Thing X Tatty Lashes in the style trending and they look like this. God, I hate sticking on lashes. Is that even stuck to my skin? Why is the lash glue just not working? Why is the glue not sticking to my skin? Maybe it's the Vaseline. Or maybe this glue that I've got is just really shit. I will admit that was a lot easier to see what I was doing. However, I've now just got to try and blend it with my natural lashes because my natural lashes are kind of blonde. I still hate sticking them on. I still hate it. <laughs> <gasps> no! I guess I just need to do like a little bit of mascara. I don't want to get it on the ends of them. That's the problem. It looks pretty good so far. I'm not too sure about these lashes though. I think they're a bit too dramatic. That has definitely worked. I'm just not too sure about these eyelashes and they still look a bit wonky. That's my fault. I actually found it a little bit more time consuming just because I was really trying to like wiggle to get my mascara on my actual lashes and not the fake lashes. I don't know, maybe it would have worked a bit better if I had some lashes that weren't quite as dramatic and like full and thick. Um, but like I said, if this works for you, that is amazing and do whatever works for you. The final makeup hack. To buff out the edge of your lipstick with a bit of blush for the illusion of bigger lips. I'm not entirely sure like what this means. I guess kind of like overlining your lips but with blusher but they said to buff it out. I need a bit of bronzer on my neck, don't I? So I'm just taking a bit of the XX Revolution blush in the shade Obscure which looks like this. 
my lips do look bigger. I also just look, <laughs> I look like I've just like made out with somebody. My lipstick is smeared all over my face. <laughs> or it does look a little bit rashy, like just a little bit. Maybe if you didn't have lip liner, but I would use a more precise brush rather than like buffing out the edges of your lips with blush. Mm, not too sure about that one. I think I'm just gonna take a bit of concealer and like clean up the edges. Looking in the viewfinder, my lips definitely do look bigger, but it does look a bit yeah, it does look a bit like I've got smeared lipstick around my mouth. But like I said, if it works for you, that is all that matters. See, now that I've cleaned it up with a bit of concealer, that definitely has worked. But I am just going to go in with a bit of lipstick and a lip liner. This is Doll Beauty in Golden Girl. I'm just adding a bit in the centre. I'm just adding a few fake freckles to try and disguise the fact that I've got dots of red lipstick on my nose bridge okay that kind of didn't work so let me see yeah my eyeshadow is already starting to crease it's a little bit creasy isn't it but this is my finished face so there are definitely some hacks in there that i would use again thank you guys for sending me in your makeup hacks i'm now just going to answer a question of the day if you guys have got any questions for me about anything leave them down below with the hashtag question of the day and i might answer one in my next video today's question comes from marina wright and she has said what is a food item slash meal you hated when you were younger but love now um there's quite a lot of things that i hated when i was younger and there's probably quite a few things that i still don't like to this day but oh my god my taste buds have definitely changed as i got older and definitely as i've tried more foods i used to hate anything that was spicy like remotely spicy i would hate it like even just even just a bit of pepper on my food absolutely hated it whereas now i can t okay i still don't like spicy spicy food but I can take stuff that's got like a low heat. I used to hate things like curries. I just really didn't like them. I also used to hate most types of potatoes. I would only really like roast potatoes or chips. Um, whereas now, like I like curries that have got potatoes in them, which is something that I never would have eaten when I was younger. Like I didn't really used to like pasta very much. And now I love pasta. Oh, this is the most random one, Doritos. I used to hate Doritos. I used to think they tasted like cardboard. And now I actually quite like them. And I think it's just over me trying them over and over again. I actually got to the point where I was like, you know what? I actually quite like these. <laughs> but two things that I've tried over and over again and to this day still hate them. And I try them on a regular basis just to check if I still hate them. First one is olives. Absolutely cannot stand olives. And I don't understand how anyone eats them. Second one is tomatoes. I like things with tomato in them like tomato ketchup but an actual tomato like eating a whole tomato I just can't do it I hate them I still hate them to this day <laughs> okay I think I'm gonna end this here I've been filming for long enough I hope you guys have a good weekend I hope you enjoy this video like I said if you're not following me on Instagram it's just at Soph and uh, yeah if you want to subscribe subscribe if you don't want to subscribe that's cool as well thanks for watching <laughs> and I will see you guys in my next video bye